Okay, so I am going to be talking about the altimeter and how it works um, from my Mitsubishi Pajero. Um, so I have a 91 Mitsubishi Pajero, and it has the 2.5 liter diesel, but that doesn't really matter in this case. Um, it's got this kind of off-road instrument cluster that I pulled apart. There's another video about that. And so I wanted to make sure the altimeter was working. So I figured I'd share kind of how I did that and, um, and how altimeters work, because I thought it was interesting. So you never know. So here you can see there's the altimeter in the big picture on the left. And it's got this arrow times 100 meters. So the 10 means 1,000 meters. Um, I'm not actually at 1,000 meters. I just, that's what it's set at right now. And this little knob here can adjust this. So if you know your altitude, like let's say you're at sea level, would be the easiest. You can just set it down to zero. Now in the back, you can see there's this gold plate here, and that is the pressure uh, pressure plate, and that is affected by the atmospheric pressure depending on what elevation you're at. And so that's what's going to change your needle, move your needle around the bellows. I'll talk more about that. Here, around the edge, that's your pressure, and it's MB, um, so that's millibar, so it's in millibar. So millibar is uh pressure and if i wonder yeah here it's a bit easier to see so here you can see um millibar on the right and then on the left it's 1013 1013 millibar and that yellow is uh or orange is sea level so if you're at zero uh, meters you should be at 1013 millibar and that's atmospheric pressure at sea level Okay, so we have our altimeter here, um, and it's not under vacuum because you have the static port, so that's that's letting air in and out. So you've got your an Android wafers, your discs or plates, whatever you want to call them. So when the pressure decreases, they should separate more, and when it increases, um, they should squish together. Um, so let's say that you're going down in elevation, pressure increases, they squish together. Now I believe in this diagram they're going to move up when they squish together, and that's going to move this guy up, turning this whole, t twisting this bar, and then turning this, uh, this rod here will turn down or anti-clockwise. Now that is going to turn this over here anti-clockwise. And then this next gear is going to have to turn clockwise. The next gear is going to turn anti-clockwise. And then that's going to make this, the needle on the face over here, is going to turn anti-clockwise down. And that means the elevation is going down because the pressure is going up. So that makes sense. The one, the picture on the right here is a little more similar, the disc set is a little more similar to what we see in our altimeter, because they're flat against the back instead of perpendicular here. So, again, let's say the pressure goes up because you're going down in elevation. Um, so these are going to squish together. That's going to pull this guy back. So this rod here is going to pull back, and that is going to twist this bar anti-clockwise. That's directly connected to this, ha um, I don't know what you call this, but this gear here. So that is going to twist anti-clockwise, and then it's going to turn this tiny little gear at the end here. Um, also anti-clockwise, actually. Or, I don't know how to say it, but basically it's going to turn it, yeah, anti-clockwise. If you're looking at the face at this point, it would be going anti-clockwise. So the, the dials will be going down in altitude which is what you want. Oh. Okay, so I got a bucket of 15 centimeters of water. Now it looks like 16 here. Um, from my perspective, it looks like 15 and a half, kind of 15 and two thirds. From my perspective, it was exactly 15. I wanted to check my iPhone measurement thing. So I have a video on the bottom, the top, this guy here on the top right is my iPad measurement uh, tool. It's not exactly right. A couple centimeters off the bottom. I've just got a little video down here of trying to get my I iPhone thing to work. It got to 16 centimeters, so pretty close. Okay, so you have 
um, 15 centimeters of water at 4 degrees Celsius, which mine is a little warmer than that, so it'll be less dense, but that's all I got. I'll give you 0 0.014517 atmospheres, or down here you'll see 1.471 uh, kilopascals. And so one atmosphere is 101.325 kilopascals, uh, or 1013.25 millibar. So you can work in millibar or kilopascals um, for atmosphere or for pressures, uh, either one, whatever you're comfortable with. Millibar is what I'm using because I uh, that's what's on my altimeter. Um, but yeah, it's just a multiply by 10 to get between them. Okay, so I found this formula. Uh, and so I, I was trying to figure out not what elevation I'm at, but what, um, like a change in pressure. So if I have 15 centimeters of water and that changes my altimeter by a certain amount, um, then what is that equivalent to in, uh, in atmospheric pressure? So, um, or what is that equivalent to, sorry, in change in elevation? So, okay, so I've got my... Okay, so I've got my formula, and um, the pressure I'm going to use for P in this equation is the pressure of the water, so 1471 pascals, and for H, that's actually what I'm calculating. So here I've got 1471 on the one side, and then everything else on the other side, I divide by 101325 pascals, and I root by 5.25588. And um, to cancel out this guy on this side, and that'll give me this, so that all this will equal this guy here. So now I subtract this, or pardon me, I add this over to this side, subtract this over to this side, and then divide by this 2.25577 times 10 to the negative 5. That'll give me this equation here. And then out of that, I'll get 24,500. Hmm, let's wait and see. I pre-recorded this, so bear with me. 24,516.32 meters. Now this is not Pascal, because this is not pressure, so this should be meters. And the reason I put the question mark here is because that seemed quite wrong. That's quite a high elevation, 24 kilometers, 24.5 kilometers. Um, and so I thought something's wrong there. That's that's pretty high. So I checked, I got this graph here. So 24.5 uh, kilometers, let's say around 25 kilometers is where this red dot is now. And that's higher than jets flying. So that's, that's wrong. I also calculated what 24,500 meters would get me in uh, millibar. It would get me around 10 millibar, which again, very wrong. Um, but yeah, so I figured something's up there. So I recalculated. So again, same formula here. Um, and then these are my constants. So I've got the head of water of 15 centimeters and the pressure of water, 1471 pascals. But instead, because I'm calculating a change in elevation, not an exact elevation, I put the uh, pressure at sea level plus the pressure change as if I was changing elevation. Put all that. Da, da, da. Same procedure, carry everything around so that I get this big old thing here. And I get a much better number. So, yeah, again, sorry, this is pre recorded, so bear with me for a second. So, I end up getting a change in, in height or a change in elevation of 123.175 meters, so around 125 meters. Okay, so you can see it's starting out around 10 times 100, so 1,000 meters. And now it's in the water jug. Um, so yeah, so it was at around 1,000. Then it's going down to around 900. So this is good. We know that we wanted it to change by about 100 meters, 123 to be specific. But that's also assuming, you know, 4 degrees Celsius water, um, exactly 15 centimeters of head on this um, water jug. Everything's perfect. So probably not 123 exactly. So the fact that it changes by about 100 meters um, in this approximately 15 centimeter uh, water tank 
is that's pretty good so we know it's working okay so that's everything um what i think i'll do is i can use the formula i showed you before to calculate what the pressure um should be depending on the elevation so um so that this needle is always where it is and this pressure indicator is always where it is which means i can uh, i can know where this needle is pointing as far as the pressure is concerned and then i can use that put the pressure i find off of here into my calculator it looks like it's around 975 or something um, put that into that formula we saw earlier use that to calculate my elevation and then i can use this knob here to change this elevation to match what the pressure says my elevation is and then it should be calibrated all right thanks for watching guys cheers